I lived in the parking lot outside her dorm. You lived in the parking lot? Yeah, so I like a stalker? So I keep an eye on her. No, okay. I'm kidding. No, okay. because we wanted to be together. And we wanted to be together. Oh, you fucking we, We'd party on the weekends. We'd party on the weekends. And then if anyone went near her, I'd beat him up. Who's that guy? You Who's know? that guy that went inside? Yeah. The long story made short is uh, that I was on a standard track of every kid and played soccer, did swim team in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of kids down at the end of my street grew up you know, skateboarding and building ramps and forts. And you got into that yeah, too. Got into all that. I got really into the skateboarding thing. What happened was when I was about 13, 14, no sob story here, but my parents split up like super high conflict divorce. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not in good terms with both my parents, but, but they read basically the rule book of what not to do in a divorce and basically just like systematically broke oh, every yeah. one of those. Yeah. So I went a little bit feral or a lot feral from about 14 until 19 um, fell straight into the skateboarding community. At that time in the early 90s, the so-called Embarcadero EMB crowd was really spinning up. Mm -hmm. Some amazing skateboarding. Rob Durdick came out to the EMB and would hang out. But there was a ton of amazing skateboarding, a lot of fights, a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, a lot of pregnant girlfriends, a lot of chaos. You, lot were, of, you were involved in all that? Lot, not every single one of those things. I okay. won't, I won't uh, my checklist. Uh, I was like, that's a know, fucking summer, um, bro. A lot of, you know, a lot of people dead in jail. It was crazy. Okay. But the skateboarding was amazing. Yeah. And made amazing friends. And so from a pretty early age, I found that being in a big pack of guys, because at that time, skateboarding was mostly yeah, just guys, sure. um, was my family. And so I started traveling for skateboarding admittedly, and I have to be careful here because the skateboarders are, will like pick me apart. I wasn't very good. I was okay. Got a little sponsor. I think they put me on for sympathy, but I was really part of that community. I kept getting broken. I kept, you know, as a skateboard kid said, getting broke off. You know, I, I broke my left foot five times. God I, just, damn. I just didn't, my body hadn't fully developed. I grew up quick as a consequence of those years. You know, I learned, Hey, look, a lot of kids just don't go to school. Like yeah. they just don't go. So I stopped going to school, doing a lot of skateboarding and the whole thing of being truant Got me in some trouble. Um, I got put away for a little while. You did? I did. I didn't harm anybody. I didn't harm myself. But the school understood, you know, this, if you go to Palo Alto schools or like, you know, as opposed to inner city San Francisco school, yeah, they're going to find you and basically um, get you at, at least attempt to put you under discipline. You have to yeah. be some teacher from that era's favorite story of <laughs> like bad kid who yeah. flipped it around. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I got out of that place. That place was really unpleasant. Kids, let me just tell you, the moment the door locks, it sinks in. Like if you if you think life sucks <laughs> wherever you are in, in freedom, think about how much it sucks when you have no, zero control over your schedule, your yeah. food, your life, your interactions. But I learned a lot in there and, and I learned that maybe um, I wasn't responsible for everything. I was still a minor, you know, that was happening to me. Um, but I got out and... Unfortunately, instead of shaping up, what I did is I was just a lot more cryptic about my activities. Sure, which is normal. Yep. Natural for yep. a kid. Got a girlfriend. She became my main focus. I wasn't skateboarding quite as much after that because I got hurt. Got really into Thai boxing, lifting weights and running. I mm -hmm. got really into fitness starting early. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a, a football coach at our school, um, Bob Peters, and he was the one who wrote the, the script that eventually became the John Hughes film. Mr. Mom. Mm -hmm. And it was called wait till your mother gets home. And he was this great, big, strong guy. And like all the girls liked him. And I was like, okay, well, yeah. you know that. And this new girlfriend, and I saw a picture of her ex-boyfriend and I was, and he's like this big, strong guy. Oh, and, that'll do and it. And I was right? like this, you know, this like <laughs> ferret, yeah. you know, like skinny yeah. ferret of a skateboard kid. And yeah. um, so I started lifting weights and doing all that. And sure. Bob Peters taught me how to take good care of my, my body, but also really focused on me also doing running and things of that sort. Anyway, in those years, I'd love to say that I got right back into school, but I really didn't. I didn't perform well in school. I was getting into fights a lot. I, I was troubled. I was, you know, I've never been a drug alcohol guy, but I yeah. dabbled in some substance abuse back then. And, yeah. Um, and got, you know, my girlfriend pregnant. Like there was a bunch of things um, that I look back on. I was like, I was really wayward. Yeah. So I followed her. She went off to college and I so I felt pretty alone. So I was, I traveled down to where she went to school, UC Santa Barbara, and I lived in the parking lot outside her dorm. You lived in the parking lot? Yeah, so I like a stalker? So I keep an eye on her. No, okay. I'm kidding. No, okay. because we wanted to be together. And we wanted to be together. Oh, you fucking we, We'd party on the weekends. We'd party on the weekends. And then if anyone went near her, I'd beat him up. Who's that guy? You Who's know? the guy that went inside? Yeah, I was kind of, you know, I was really afraid to lose her. You know, pretty soon. Wait, did you really beat up guys that came close to I me? Might have, <laughs> I might have. I might have. I might have. And you know what? You know what? This is, and I don't recommend this. I don't recommend this, but you know what? It, it 
quote unquote worked in the sense that oh, she, it works. she was just like, you're, you know, you're my protector. You're yeah. the person that's really there for me. So we got a pet ferret. We had, you know, we had the whole, the Wait, whole picture. And at this time, you know, this is like, she, you're, this is like a uh, college. Age. I should have been, she was a year older than me. So I should have been in high school, but you've now been lifting and, and throwing bombs for a, like a few years, know, right? It's really bad guys. Don't pay, don't do what I did. Just don't do it. Well, Unless you really want to impress a girl. No, no. Because <laughs> it will Listen, leave I was an impression. Determined, I was determined to keep her. And then, um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll, get back to, we'll get back to how this can all go badly wrong. So what happened was I had to figure out a way to get into college. Yeah. Because she was there. And, um, and I didn't think I'd go to college, but I thought, okay, what am I good at? Basically nothing. Um, but I can lift weights and I can run. I like hanging out with friends and working with in big teams of you know guys i'd done a little bit of that skateboard shops and factories and i thought um i'll become a firefighter right everyone loves firefighters i Dude. wanted a dog so i started taking fire science classes at mission college in the south bay uh -huh. um loved the the work just felt like it was just the greatest it's like cook with your friends and like fight fires everyone loves firefighters not of everyone course. loves cops and you know who else loves firefighters chicks there was I feel there like was a, all of your decisions are chick the, fucking driven <laughs> there's a the, <laughs> I decided I was going to become a firefighter. Okay. But then someone out at Mission College said, listen, you stand a much better chance of going up the ranks in the, in the fire department if you have a bachelor's degree. And so I took the SAT. Um, I have no idea how it happened, but I somehow managed to break a thousand. Not okay. by much. I thought you were no. about to say 1600. No. I was like, you son no, of no, a No, no. My, my, my girlfriend got, was like in the high 1500s. I went to a school where literally they'd publish that as a double page spread of who was going to what school. Yeah, my Harvard my early admission, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. I took the SAT. I applied to UC Santa Barbara and somehow I got in. I wrote an honest essay. It just said, listen, I, I was not a good student. Um, I had some challenges early on, but you know, I take responsibility for them. My girlfriend goes to UCSB. I want to be a firefighter. I want a Dalmatian. I like, live in the parking know, lot. I live in the parking yeah. lot. And it obviously touched a chord, you know, and so the lesson there is kids, you know, tell the truth on your entrance exam. 